Welcome to Chronic and Coffee, live on MSP Waves Radio. The material on these shows are provided for educational purposes only. Statements and show topics are not necessarily the beliefs of the radio station. MSP Waves Radio and its owners take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show hosts or their guests. Enjoy! Yo! Yo, yo, yo. I did a lead in and then I stumbled. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Grim. Frank is Grim. Chronic and Coffee is live once again on MSP Waves. You have to excuse my voice. I'm a little tore up. My throat, my chest, my nose, everything. It's all fucked up again. Last week was a uh, pretty. Sh- Can you guys hear me? Should I go on? Maybe in. Maybe I was in the wrong room. Does it matter? I don't think it matters, right? Now I'm in the live on air. You guys should be able to hear me, all right? How's everybody doing? Besides me sounding like shit, everything's fucking great. You guys winning? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, nice little lead in. I think I got it going. I got the little disclaimer from my beautiful, wonderful wife at the beginning. Kick ass song to, to kind of bring us into the mood. Thanks for sticking around after Full Force Radio, right? Full Force Radio. It's not Full Force Thursday anymore. It's for full, full Force Radio. <laughs> we appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, this is Chronic and Coffee, like I said. We had a little bit of metal there. It's officially 420 here somewhere, he says. Wrong Dong says it's 420 somewhere. I'm down with that. Celebrate. I kind of wished when I realized that today's show was going to be on Thursday for me. I was like, damn it, wouldn't it be cool if it was on 420? But, hey, it's 420 with you, so it's the same thing. I celebrate. Y'all know what 420 is, right? I think it's appropriate that we have uh, some good content about 420-type material. We've got some chronic tonight, uh, chronic-related material to discuss. We have a guest lined up um, who knows a little bit about that. He's going to share some expertise with us. Hello. Welcome. I'm going to try to run through probably the the whole list of people I got over there uh, in the, um, the guest list. Chief showed up. What's up, Chief? Hey, um, Chief, if you want, whenever we get situated here, I was kind of hoping you'd show up. I understand that you got to get on and off pretty quickly. It's late where you're at. We'll get to you. Um, and then we have another guy lined up who's already over here. And I believe we have two more people who said they would show up. So that's what I'm working on. we got a couple of guests. I'd like to thank Jack Dove for doing that. He's putting in a lot of legwork for me this week. Uh, without him, we wouldn't have it so stacked. It is definitely stacked. We got Chief Mapster in the building. What's up, buddy? He's going to talk to us about some of his things going on. Uh, we off, like I said, a chronic topics. We got some some of that lined up too, with a blunt smasher. <laughs> and uh, Jack Dub has a couple of people with some homesteading slash prepper knowledge, maybe some homeschooling from what I understand. Whole lot, whole list of things, man. It's a deep show. We could have broke this one up into probably two shows, Jack. Just <laughs> But it's all good. We're going to do the best we can because that's what we always do, right? That's a win if we do. Like I said, my voice is a little tore up. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to do the best I can to not snot or cough into your ears. Sorry about that if I do. It is what it is. I got my coffee. I got my water. We got the chronic. It's 420. I'm going to try to get to that. I'm sorry if I didn't have it lined up, but I will definitely uh, try to read your thing there, uh, Wiz Squid. You have to apologize if I stumble and getting that lined up, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't aware you'd be here tonight. If I can, I will definitely will. I mean, I can at least read it. But like I said, my voice is a little jacked. I'll do the best I can. <laughs> and you know what? If, if we if we have time, and I'm sure we'll make time, we'll have you drop your little linky dink. Okay? Sound good? Everybody chilling? We're having uh, Jack Dub is typing. What's up, Jack Dub? You made it over here. That's cool. I don't know where my brother is. We're missing one guy, two-toe Tommy. I guess he's a little busy. He might have a headache. He might be whatever. Uh, happy, happy, happy. Excuse me, April 20th, a.k.a. 420. It's 420 somewhere. It's not quite there yet for me. It's just over 9 o'clock on 419. Boo. But, um, yeah, I had a kind of a rough start this morning. I, I think maybe uh, I can get that off my chest so we can kind of move forward. Man, the dust thing, right? Like That's kind of my issue. We had a dust storm come through last week, and I can't really get mad at the weather, or can I, right? <laughs> but there was a dust storm last week that fucked me up. And, uh, man, it kind of just, because I'm already jacked up, I've been watching my, my maintenance guy walk the grounds every morning for like two and a half years. He does this. Freaking blowing his uh, wind blower, blowing the sidewalks off, blowing dust into dust. Like, 
I'm guessing he's trying to blow the rocks off of the sidewalk into the f fucking other rocks. I don't know. But he walks around with the mask on. And it's every morning at 7.30. So I know I, at 7.30 I gotta go close my windows and shit so he doesn't blow his fucking dust in my, in my thing. And that's just one of my rants that started me off my day. It didn't help with my the way I sound, I'm sure. <laughs> so I'm trying to take it easy. I'm not going to rush myself. I'm not going to overextend myself. I appreciate everybody for showing up. Hopefully I can give everybody a shout out in the audience. You guys are what it's all about. Thanks for listening. Without y'all, it's just me talking to myself. Um, why don't I try to do that? Uh, Incapola, did I say that right? If I didn't, I apologize. What's up? Agro, what's up? Amber Uper Duper. I'm sorry, your name keeps going. Is it Amber Uper Duper Duper or some shit? I don't know. Asan Intrigue, Blunt Smasher. Blunt Smasher's the guest. Chief Mapster, he's a guest. What's up? Cope. Thanks, Cope. You're always here, man. I appreciate you showing up. You always got some cool pictures and shit. Crimson's still hanging out after her set, after bringing the full force radio. Thanks for hanging out. Enrique, Free Tissues, Intuitive Jacob. What's up, man? How you doing? IQ Baladan. What's up? Jack Dub, of course. That's my buddy. He's going to help us out tonight, of course, and he has before in the past. He's part of the team here at Chronic and Coffee. Jesse to you, what's up, buddy? He's a awesome part of MSP Waves team. Shit behind the scenes, does things like dropping in the reminders, having people uh, subscribe to the shows. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate that, of course. Lemony Cricket, LL's in the building. What's up, LL? We're gonna have a conversation about some things later. You and I and Jack Dub and everybody else. M1, Matuka, Menno, what's up, buddy? Negative, Negativer, Normic, Pepperico, the Pirate. Somebody break out a cookie. Fee. Prepper, hey, Prepper's going to be having a conversation with us as well. What's up, man? Thanks for coming. Wrong Dong, Road to Nowhere. No, we're not playing Nickelback. Stacy Jean, Team Steam, and Vista Hook. That wasn't too bad, was it? It feels like it. My throat feels like it's bleeding. <laughs> so the main, uh, what we're going to try to do is get everybody that we can um, into the waiting room. So, yeah, I think I'll be talking with Blunt Smasher. Uh, wait, no, Chief, right? Chief. Let's get Chief on. I think we'll lead up to the conversation with Chief, and we'll have him drop some things about uh, what projects he's going on. For those who don't know, I haven't talked to him yet. This will be our first conversation uh, that's not text-based. So I look forward to talking with him. It's music and other things. I believe he has a whole lot of other things to share with us, right? No, Nickelback, Road to Nowhere. It's not happening. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll do that first. We'll jump on with uh, Chief Mapster after I get the uh, a song played here. And get a drink of water and refresh myself, hydrate the uh, the voice tube there. <laughs> so yeah, to lead off, I'm going to play a song by Mac-10 that's relevant to the show or any other freaking time, just matters. Here you go. Um, I just want you to take a hit. Nope, you can't. Okay, I forgot. Good thing I remembered before I started. Uh, almost fake news to you guys because my mouse is a saboteur. Still. Still messing with me. Well, that was OG freaking Mac-10. That was off of the Friday soundtrack. Y'all remember Friday, right? Psst, who doesn't? One of the dopest soundtracks. If you go back in time or if you lived during that time, man, all the great fucking rappers at the time was on that shit. All right, Wiz. Um, you know, I just want to um, get with the guests first that are here. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate you hanging out, and we'll drop in. We'll get your blog up, all right? Chief, I'm about to pull you in right now to live on there. You ready? Here he comes. There you go. You are live. What's up, bud? You there? Love it. Yes, sir. I'm here, brother. What's up, man? Welcome. Thanks for joining us. This is Chronic and Coffee. Uh, we haven't really talked before. I'm Frankus Grimm, your chief mapster. Please explain a little bit who you are to us, me, and everybody in the audience, if you don't mind. Give us a little rundown about who you are and what you got going on, bro. Please. Sure, brother. Thanks for having me. Uh, my real name is Paul Hot. Uh, I'm in Ohio right at the moment. I travel a lot, but um, most of my time is dedicated to helping people understand crypto right now, and uh, I'm in helping people with music. Uh, I've just been doing it for probably about 10 years, helping people um, with their dreams, whatever that may be. I come back from come from a finance economics background, so um, I kind of do have the business mindset to help people when they they need to provide some value. But I really just try to help people achieve their dreams with the goal of. You know, hopefully one day making this world a better place and more positive place to have children and to have live in. Um, you know, I'm sick of uh, what's going on with the world and it's just time for a change. So I've been yeah, trying yeah. to do my part the past 10 years, just bringing people like mine souls together and 
um, Steam is just a really great extension of that. So I just, uh, yeah, tried to do a little bit of everything for it to try to bring some value. That's real awesome, dude. And like, I kind of read your blog and I, like, I didn't really know, like, I, I <laughs> what does it say? It says your life purpose is to help everyone. I'm like, damn, dude, that's pretty heavy. Like it, I was like, but I feel you. Cause I don't feel like enough people feel that way to be, you gotta be positive. And if you want to change it for the future, and you mentioned the kids, which I have, uh, a lot of, so we you know to secure a better future. We all got to work and it starts with helping people. I've totally feel that what what you said you started 10 years ago what changed you or what was going on 10 years ago that made you start that outlook or that that attitude or or your mission so to speak was there something that made you decide that's what you were going to do uh i think it was maybe a period of self-reflection because i you know i went to high school got the full, uh, full rise uh, tuition scholarship to go to college and just that first year i realized that you know um you know you can go the route of uh, getting nine to five and doing that route but my heart and everything drug me in a different direction, which was just helping people. Um, so I just been, the universe just brings people in my lives, like the most, you know, talented, kind people. And I just try to keep that going. Um, but I just been, you know, traveling the world, trying to use, you know, what, got, what the universe has given me to help people as much as I can. And I know it seems like a big purpose, um, but I really feel like if we bring people together, um, you know, it, we can really do this, especially through music and technology, which are awesome. two of the biggest things in the world, you know? Yeah, they go hand in hand here on Steam, and I, I I'll try not to cut you off there. I heard I echoed over you, so I'll try to keep my mouth shut. So okay, so let's let's jump it. I mean, that's it is a huge purpose. I kind of I feel you on that. We're probably cosmic brothers on a mission here, and I'm glad that you joined us and we're sharing some of that. Can you tell us a little bit about the music or the crypto? Which one of your one that you feel like sharing? Hopefully both, right? Uh, I understand that you're over there at SMA. That's a Steam it Music Alliance. Can you tell us a little bit about that, maybe? Yeah, sure. Um, I've just been just kind of morphed in uh, what I do, you know, just in the daily life with help, uh, you know, I call them crystals, people who have positive intentions with music um, to try to get, you know, their dreams come true. And when I found Steam, it, you know, last year, I started off doing the Beat Battle League, um, which is just, you know, a weekly thing for, you know, producers to make music off of, around. And I was hoping by doing this that, you know, they, it helps them, you know, with deadlines, helps them grow as their craft, but also brings people together. Um, you know, we need to have good producers with the new good musicians, with the good rappers, with everybody can just meet each other and find the right synergy to help each other out. But um, so that was, I did the Beat Battle League for a while. i um, still doing it right now. Um, you know, it's, it's grown pretty well. And then um, it's it started off and I started doing another contest called the Student Music League Challenge, um, which is more uh, open music, you know, from anybody from, you know, rappers to lyricists to beat producers. And they it's the same thing based off a of theme every round. And then that kind of moved in, if you look at Jack Dub, into the Steam Music League. Um, we have nine contests, um, anything from those two contests I just stated to uh, we've written, you know, written word contests, poetry slam. We have a contest about edu music, music education. Um, we have a contest about music reviews of other Steamians. Um, so it's basically just uh, encouraging people to help each other in the music industry. And I mean, the people with passion in music. Um, and the, the Steam Music Alliance is something that me, uh, Sevo, and Macchiata came up with as just a kind of extension of this um, to kind of bring people together. And whether it be through different radio shows, whether it be contests, whether it be interaction, um, we're just trying to really bring people together so we can kind of raise the, <laughs> raise the world's vibrations through music because that's one of the ways we can do it, brother, you know? It's probably the best way, like, because it doesn't take much thought music is vibration right so if you're making real good music and you have that frequency and that intent behind it it's probably one of the best ways to affect people without them even all they have to do is listen right like or be open so that's awesome man and uh that sounds like all a bunch of good stuff and i hear i know that james gets is over there quite often there in an sma is that correct you guys feature a lot of his stuff right we like to feature a lot of his stuff too <laughs> You said he really is uh, doing something great over there. I know he's a. I know he's in Atlanta, and you know Atlanta is the hip hop, you know, center of right now. And it seems like the hip hop center for negative energy and negative intentions and negative consequences that are in the mainstream. So when I met him on here, I just thought, you know, he's a really good positive vibe, and he goes through stuff. And people who go through stuff, they can help others who are going through that stuff. That's kind of reason why they went through that. One of the reasons. So I really think that, um, you know, I love I love supporting him. He has two contests, so I really feel like. Uh, it's gonna it's a great thing that he's doing as well so hopefully we can bring i just like to empower people and give them confidence because these people are really great um 
people and musicians. So sometimes you just need some people to listen to you and actually give you feedback and give you the confidence to actually do what you're supposed to do in this world, you know? I absolutely understand that. And I've, I really, like, kind of gave me, like, shivers on the back of my neck because I feel that about James. Like, he's one of the guys that if you didn't, you don't have to see him, right? But if you do see it, his voice sounds like a freaking mainstream, like he should be there, you know what I mean? And, like, he totally has the skill, you know what I mean, delivery, talent, whatever. He's just banging out freaking fire every time he drops a song. So, like, I believe that he's one of those guys here that you only find around here and that we bump into each other for a reason, right, for that, to help our vibrations. Either he's he's making music or you're pushing people who make music or, you know, I'm trying to do my part and get people out here and talk about themselves, therefore continuing the journeys. And that's what it's all about, man. That's what I love about the digital thing about, about Steam It. So, I mean, Steam It Music Alliance, big ups. I, I don't stop over there often enough. I'm going to try to more and more in the future. Check your guys' contest out. Thank you, uh, Jack Duff, for dropping any links. What's your most recent thing that you got going on right now that people should be aware of over there at SMA? Um, right now, I have two different. We have two different contests going. Um, he dropped this the review. The review just kind of shows. Uh, we have nine contests, and they go every week. Um, so you know, that's a review. I'll uh, I'll post it again so okay. we can uh, you see it. But uh, you know, two different contests going just with the Sumi Music uh, League Challenge and the Beat Battle League. I judge that. But uh, and we have a couple of different radio shows that have been kind of doing pretty well. They're starting off right now. Um, so it's kind of we're kind of getting traction. Um, you know, it's this is one of the biggest ones, you know, obviously the, the PAL network. So it's really nice yeah, to yeah, see yeah. you take the time to let us uh, talk to you. And I appreciate what you're doing. And it's uh, I, love, I love the name Chronic and Coffee. It's a, what, a, what a great name. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things that's real. And I think that's why people like it. Like, I didn't think very hard to come up with a name, but it's all about the people, man. And I think but most people who dig it understand why Chronic and Coffee fits, whatever. But thank you, man. Um, thank you for coming by we're always that's what we're about that's what i'm about that's what crown and coffee is supposed to be about it's about the people coming on and sharing with us teaching us things sharing themselves you know what i'm saying we're becoming homies at the same time what do you know uh somebody wanted to know if they if we take audience questions do you have a question let me snick it i'll he he, he could see you go ahead and ask him if you don't mind do you chief Oh, not at all. I love to i'm sorry if i didn't I'm like you don't mind do you <laughs> you don't mind do you <laughs> Go ahead, Lemony. I know you, you might have to get off here pretty quick. Um, Jack Dub said it was late for you, right? There you go. There's a question. Uh, if you'll take it, what would you suggest to someone who has songs running through their head all day but has no idea how to get them into a form others can hear at Chief Mapster? That's a great question. I would try to find other like-minded souls that have uh, complementary talents. So say if you are an artist or a good writer, um, you find a producer. So I just, you know, and Steam, there's tons of people too. And you never know, sometimes they might say one little suggestion that might change everything cool. or might help you actually get it on paper or actually get it in recording form. You just need to find a complimentary soul to help you because it's, you don't want to do this life and these projects by yourself. It's, you know, teamwork makes a dream work. It's kind of sounds cheesy, but that's what I've said. And hmm. you just got to find the right team and the universe will guide you to it. Um, you just got to find someone that will help you and be willing to, you know, receive the help. So and it comes down to Nickelback. This dude loves new Nickelback. <laughs> yeah, man. He likes doing that. I think he's going to, he's going to be known for Nickelback on this now. And if I can, Lemony Cricket, if, what do you, I mean, it doesn't really matter. What kind of songs do you have run through your head? Are you, do you see yourself as like a, a writer of ballads or like a poetry? Like what kind of music do you see your words maybe becoming? And maybe that can help you decide what community you should aim that intention at and, and you'll attract people right now you have the attention of people who who make music so you're, you're creating something right now by throwing your question out there and you, who knows you know what i mean so always stay active in the community that's what crown and coffee is about this is what chief mapster is about over at steam music so you know you just got to get out there and like you say get around like-minded people that's how i found it steam has inspired me to want to make music again you know james gets it help you know he ignited something into me because I came around. It's like, eh, and it was like a writer's block thing. And then we, that's how I met him, bumped into a, through a writer's block post. And he's dope. EDM. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I couldn't tell you anything about EDM. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like, yeah. I mean, 
one thing about that we just did a, the week with the EDM uh, for that. I, don't, I feel like going, and this might sound cheesy, but go to festivals. Like you know, there's so many EDM festivals, even just different. Um, there's so many people involved in EDM, and literally, if you, there's thousands of people. Just you know, just talk to people. Like talk to them, like my souls, uh, and they might tell you something. You might get feedback from someone that you not even you know thinking about. Uh, it's really just about interaction. I feel like, um, totally. and worst case scenario, go out in nature. That's why I would say if you have a problem or you need something, just go out in nature and usually it will be solved. Nice. That's what I need to do. I haven't been out in nature lately. I think Saturday might go hiking. Thanks for that suggestion. Now I'm going to do it. There. Yeah. Yes. Nobody's hating on Nickelback. I just, I think I'm just going to give dude a hard time for, for going hard, trolling us, asking about Nickelback. So that'll just be your thing. All positive love. Oh, no, no, no hate. I can't hate them. I mean, they're successful. They're millionaires. They just make the music they make whatever <laughs> Go to the everybody ocean. has their own life purpose right who are we to tell them what their life purpose is you know that's why i say but you know absolutely well right on man i appreciate you coming by um what about crypto what can you tell me about crypto and making some investments or selling business plans or whatever it may be that, that we do over here at steam do you have any maybe knowledge you can drop off for me on that one probably the audience as well yeah, I'm a big believer in, um, you know, the, the creations that Dan created, um, whether it be Steam, BitShares, and EOS. Um, those are the three that I, you know, focused on um, just for the many benefits it has. And, you know, they have the scalability. They have um, long term. They have communities behind them, the technology behind them. Um, so really, I think it's about adaption and adoption and people becoming aware of it. Um, but a lot of the people that I come in contact with, I tell them about EOS and Steam. Um, Steam is, you know, with Steam, it is really great because it's one of the best proof of concepts of how crypto can be used. And you know, besides instant transactions, there's a community around it. Um, but a lot of these people, they want cryptocurrency so they can, you know, make some money to fund their dreams. So yes. what better way to find good investments such as, um, I, I, that's what I'm saying, EOS, especially when the, when the test network comes out, or the actual network comes out in June. I've had friends that bought in at 50 cents, 75 cents, one of my you know, business partners and it's up to nine dollars ten dollars now and it's going to go higher once the network comes out um here in june you know most people are saying you know 30 to 40 i think it's going to be higher than that um but that's just something that uh that's one of the biggest things and then um you know sometimes i just do the grapevine i find out different uh you know cryptocurrencies that you know they might know developers and they might figure out when uh, a certain coin will be listed on certain exchanges um, so I just found out one recently, which is called, um, let me find it real quick for you. Yeah, sure. Please drop the link if you have it available. Sharing the knowledge on the crypto. Some of us are trying to invest and maybe pay some electric bills with crypto. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Somebody. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, hey, that's part of the dream, right, too. You need electricity. So It's my goal you're... for this year to be able to do that. I'm just saying, I'll put that out in that atmosphere in January when I found the place or December when I found Steam. It, I'm like, holy shit, can you really make money? Or is it possible? You know what I mean? I mean, right? It's, I guess I'm think, gassed up on Steam. I'm hoping that we can find something that we can make a living off of, like you were suggesting. So, what's EOS? Is that something to do with like another currency? E e or? Yeah, e EOS is um, basically Dan created BitShares, Dan created Steams. So this is like the third one he's working on. I say e EOS is kind of like the Android and iOS of blockchain technology. Um, so it's like kind of going to be the mainstream platform that it's going to take over Ethereum because Ethereum can't scale. And so Ethereum is number two, about $47 billion market cap. Um, and uh, EOS is around $7 billion. But basically, uh, EOS, you can build dApps, which is decentralized apps on it. And also a lot of these big businesses and infrastructures, when they move to the blockchain, they're going to be looking for something that can actually scale. And EOS can do thousands of transactions per second. And, uh, you know, th so that's one reason why EOS is going to be, I think it's going to be the, the big boy, like the kind of like the operating system um, that most people realize for the blockchain. Um, and, you know, so it's really going to be huge for a lot of people. It's going to help a lot of people actually build businesses and live life on the blockchain. Um, so that's why I like EOS. Um, and I guess the one thing Bain in general, I think that cryptocurrency is teaching us um, is that money, like, you know, valid, money is not derived by, like, the, it's not by a stack of gold or a stack of metals. People give value to currency. 
Um, so that's why more and more people are realizing that the people give the value to the currency, not some stack of money tied to it. And the U.S. dollar is only worth that because other people want to use that money. So a lot of these projects, such as Steam and U.S. and all of them, they just need they need to figure out how to get people using it. The more people use it, the more value has it, and the more people are giving the value to the currency. So I think it's really waking up the world. Um, so hopefully the Federal Reserve and these elite elite bankers won't have control over so much. Um, so that's one thing about a crypto. I'm super excited about that's i think that's maybe at the same time the biggest hurdle that crypto faces it is the people when the people are behind it and people are trying to use it to create change on the maybe their own accord and i think we're going to face a hurdle with that but we're already ahead of the game man so they're going to have to catch up we're going to do it one way or the other i appreciate you dropping some knowledge man and we'll see uh where that goes i hope steve what do you what is your forecast on steaming itself as a currency i know this whole thing is kind of beta from my understanding what do you feel like steam it's going to do in the next year or so i i think uh because of steam it steam's going to stay around for a while um you know i understand that uh, dan and ned created this the steam it based off steam but i know that uh, there's going to be some competition you know because the one thing steam has right now is kind of the first mover advantage um you know with steam it you get paid in cryptocurrency it's a social media site based on cryptocurrency that's not a proprietary information. Anybody can do that. Anybody can create that based off a token. But the real reason why it's so successful is look at the community. It's great. And people literally are living their lives off this. And it's, that's beautiful. It's a whole new way to live, live life. So I really see Steam being around for a while as well, just because of that, because of the community people behind it, the people that really care about it. We, you know, there are a lot of brand ambassadors that are just telling the world about it. And also, it's so fast. When you send Steam to someone, it's so fast. It's literally a second or two. And there's never usually any, you know, problems with it or anything like that. So for the new, for this new world that we're starting to live in, I think once more people find out about it, it's going to really going to boom. Right on. I like the sound of that. I'm in it for the long run. I don't see anything else going on. Um, that's social that allows me to interact with people and build networks and possibly quite possibly make a nice little living. And I say nice because I'm, you know, I'm humble. I just want a little bit. Like I said, pay the bill every month. That'd be awesome. My wife would appreciate it. I know that for sure. <laughs> so thank you for sharing your knowledge. I, I mean, I don't want to cut you off. I hope you hang around. I just got to keep the flow going, brother. And I've got some other people lined up, and I know they're like you. They're late. So I want to get everybody on as quickly as I can. I appreciate the conversation. I look forward to the Steam It Music Alliance contests now that are going on now and the ones of the future. Thank you for sharing the knowledge with the crypto thing. I need more of that. Anything else you wanted to drop with us, brother? Oh, no, I appreciate your time, and thanks for having me. And I'm, I'm going to try to stay on a little bit longer, but if anybody has any questions, I'm here, and I am appreciate talking to you. I feel like you're a soul, brother, and let's, let's try sure. to change this world together, brother. Hey, man, that's what I'm here for. That's my hopes. Like I said, I'm humble, but at the same time, I'm here for the fight and hopefully for the better of people. You know what I mean? That's what, what I try to put my energy to. It's all about winning. Let's be positive. Let's do it. Let's connect any way we can, help each other out. Keep the vibration rolling. 420 Steam sound waves. What's up, brother? I seen you just showed up. I got you lined up. So, yeah, Chief, thanks for coming, man. Mad respect. Jack Dub, can you drop another link for the bro? And, uh, yeah, please hang out and conversate with the guys over there. I'm sure they would like to know some more from you if you can. Thanks for coming by. And as if you have anything else in the future, say even next week, stop on by, bro. The seat's always open. Appreciate you, brother. Good vibes. And thanks again. Yeah, good vibes, man. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll pull you to the waiting room, and then from there, you can uh, hang out or whatever it is. I appreciate your, appreciate your conversation. I'm growing a little short-winded here, so I'm going to have to take a break. you have to excuse me. Um, I'm going to go into the next segment, though, hopefully pretty smoothly here. And I'm going to take care of more than... Wait, not, not, not yet. Not yet. Okay, this one. <laughs> So this one's going to be like a double-edged sword for me. It's only funny to me, and I am I, I'm my biggest fan. I ask my wife about my humor. Anyways, I'm rambling. That's why I need a break. This is Where's the Weed At? This is for Rachel's requests, and it also is going to lead into our next guest, Blunt Smasher. You want to step up over there in the waiting room, and we'll start our conversation after the end of this song, bro. Again, this is Where's the Weed At? by Cottonmouth Kings. Rachel's requests. Request. <laughs> I love you, dear. Thanks, guys. Here you go. And thanks again, Chief. Yo, where's the weed at? Happy 420, everybody. This is Chronic and Coffee. I'm Frank Grimm. 
That was Cottonmouth Kings. That was Rachel's request, of course. It goes in perfect for today and any fucking day as far as I'm concerned. Where's the fucking weed at? My wife takes care of me on that front. <laughs> Don't be jealous. What's up, sound waves? Thanks for passing the digital blunt earlier. Chief Master, Chief Ma Mapster. Sorry, dude. Stumbling. Thank you for your, uh, your knowledge. My wife said, hey, man, that kid's got something to say. We're going to bring him back just because my wife enjoyed your, our conversation. Thank you, soul brother. We're going to pull in Blunt Smasher right now. Are you ready? Brace yourself. Uh, there you are. You all right? Did you make it? Hey. What's up, Blunt Smasher? Thank you for coming to Chronic and Coffee. I'm Frickus Grimm. You're Blunt Smasher. Let everybody know who you are, what you're about, brother, real quick. I'll try not to interrupt you. Uh, yeah, so I'm Blunt Smasher. Uh, the name kind of came from gaming. Sweet. I oh, run a like blog on Steam. Yeah. It was uh, Elder Scrolls Online, I think it was. But, uh, I've been named it online. Um, yeah, I run a blog on Steam It. Um, do a lot of cannabis reviews there. Sweet. And a little bit of a herb growing series. Looking, putting in some growing series yeah you, uh, you take some badass pictures of whatever it is you say that you grow whether or not I do not know but those pictures are awesome Jack Dub you got this people are saying they can't hear you very well uh, maybe you could turn yourself up a little bit blunt but um Jack you got a picture or two of some of the pictures that blunt smash has taken I know he posts a couple over there in our server uh so you got a web, you got a blog series about growing as well as strain review. I like your strain reviews, man. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh yeah. So perfect. I've got two licensed producers. One is uh, Whistler Medical Corp in Whistler, BC, and the other is uh, Delta Nine, a biotech in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And then beyond that, I get um, a lot of bud from the Green Rhino Dispensary in Vancouver, BC which they have a really good selection. They've got probably 100 types of this that they sell. Dab, edibles, or maybe not edibles, topicals and CBD capsules and all that kind of stuff. Sweet. I like that CBD stuff, man. It helps a lot out with the, with the anxiety. Um, Jack Dub dropped a picture over there of one of your... Strain reviews. It was the dr the Justin True Dope. <laughs> hey. Can you tell us about that one? Obviously, that's a little play on your guys. Is is he a prime minister? How does that work in in Canada land? I'm yeah, sorry. He's the prime. He's the prime minister, so he would be somewhat equivalent to the president of the states there. Right, right, right. He's um, the man running the show. So. Do they have? Uh, never mind. I'm not going to go there. He's the guy who runs the show. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of elected on the uh, promise to legalize cannabis. That was his main uh, thing there. So, Oh, yeah? Is he, he not producing? He has, uh, well, it's supposed to be coming in effect in, uh, I believe, July 1st, but um, it's got to pass through the, the Senate and all that. Still got a little ways to go. Okay. Are they taking? No, I've actually read an article a little about that recently in one of the uh, uh, magazines that I got, or my somebody got, in, my wife, I believe, of course, from the dispensary. And um, I don't go out much, anyways, from the dispensary. And it was talking a lot about the Canadian version of legalizing it. And it sounds like they're taking their time and trying to get it. Um, how can I say it? Uh, bright. <laughs> Uh, they're kind of doing the opposite of what the United States is doing, and and they're it sounds like I don't know maybe they're not because you're there maybe they're doing it wrong I don't I don't know but they're taking their times from my perception the way I seen it maybe so they can nail it right for and get it right the first time is that how you see it or no? Uh, there's a lot of controversy around it because um, like what lots of people would like is a full decriminalization of it right mm. and but they're not doing that they're regulating it so right it's okay. um you can still get penalized for it put in jail and stuff if, um say selling to minors or something like that 
um, but or even if you're like they're gonna have a four uh, plant limit for each household but uh, there's two provinces that said they're not gonna allow Quebec um, so we'll see where that goes federally it will be legal though to well I guess that's what I kind of meant by the backwards and they're doing it on the federal level right and then they're gonna yeah instead of like the states out here the United States have been slowly doing a piece by piece kind of to the point now where it should be evident federal people that the you know it's almost 50 percent of the states now have either you know one version or the other of of legal marijuana whether it be medical or otherwise so i don't know hopefully they'll figure out the people have spoken just give it to us i go i say yeah. totally just give it to us why well, i mean I, I understand the medicinal thing and i think that should totally be funded and treated as as a medicinal thing there's a lot of help there for people who need to be medicated but at the same time it's a plant let us have it let us grow it we'll do what we want with it what's up yeah exactly i mean <laughs> trying to trying to put laws against nature is just not gonna work right when you go well, against nature man will never win that's my theory well yeah not especially i mean it's nature and man working against some other men so yeah they don't have they don't stand a chance it's just gonna take its time it's gonna work out since when do governments listen to the people well there you go you know yeah. We're working on that it's one a, person at a time. We're making connections, and hopefully we're changing the future just by talking and conversating about it right now. You know what I mean? It's happening. Mostly all about the money, right? Because they, they get all the incentives through the taxes. And here right. there's going to there's gonna be an extra tax coming in. It's going to be a dollar per gram tax on top of the normal tax, right? So oh, yeah. It's, it's going to make it really hard for the... the uh, legal entities to keep up with because they've got all this extra yeah somebody just I, the scrolls going the chat scrolls going pretty fast but I saw somebody say something about the proponents you know what I mean and that's the big thing that is the money like you said as well the money is trying to keep the money in check until they figure out how to make their money which they will. I mean, they just got to be smart about it. You, they could still make their money if they're smart about it. They can make taxes off of it and treat it like alcohol if they wanted to. So just get with it, people. Shake our fist yeah. at the man, everybody. Come on. Shake it together. We're mad. Give us our plans. Yeah. Even once it becomes legal here, there'll still be a, a fight to, you know, fully decriminalize. Uh, no no one should go to jail for a plan. But most people. I have to I have to agree and especially not the weed plant god bless yeah exactly it's, it's it's got a lot of medical properties and I mean in the US I know it's scheduled for like the schedule one uh, where it says it has no medicinal properties and <laughs> it's uh, just as dangerous as heroin and all the other. I still don't understand how they get away with that when it's proven but, but you know it's like it's gonna zit it it's going to take a couple more states where that 50-50 line has been crossed and Congress has no chance. And I'm not trying to get political with them. I'm just saying for this action to happen, the people have to speak and then Congress and everybody else has to do their job. And that's all we can really do is just talk about it enough, you know, like I, I guess. Yeah. And it'll I think eventually the power Canada, will sway. With Canada doing it, it'll, it'll uh, give it a big... Yeah, I think that'll help for sure. I mean... Get with it, people. America, you already see the money that's that's there and how not crazy it is. And the people who use it are regular day, everyday folk. And it's safer than the other stuff a lot of times. You have pain management issues. Guess what can help you? A natural plant in various forms. Topicals, vapors, food, edibles, whatever. Yeah. I'm sorry. Smoking, you know. Just I mean, so many even different beyond ways. That, even beyond that, hemp was like one of the most widely produced crops of human era it's been used for paper like they they used it for sails to get across the oceans during the the uh, great migrations over here right right well, way back in time right you think that maybe there wasn't a, a land strain back native to North America maybe that the uh, whoever crossed that Bering Strait brought it who knows right well yeah I, I think it was over here uh, before so Right. There's land races all over the earth. That there's some people called, called the strain hunters, that mm -hmm. tube or something, and they they go hunting the different 
land race. Indeed, and that's what I meant, like the strain races in. I believe one of those gentlemen who was doing that show uh, passed away recently or something like that, unfortunately. But that's a good, That was a good one. I was uh, behind that one. Hopefully they continue making a show about that. I'm all about the weed, and that's what we're talking about here on Chronic and Coffee. Man, it's nice talking to you. You got me all mellowed out, bro. Everybody else mellow up in here? Somebody said uh, I could afford to get political on this subject. You know, all I could say about political stuff on this subject is it's very apparent that the people want it and everybody else who claim to be politicians or making money off it they have no choice eventually they're just gonna have to get on board people are woke come on everybody's doing it i mean that's not it sounds pretty peer pressure like they warned us against when we were kids you know don't do drugs or and you see the commercials where come on man come on peer pressure that's peer pressure these motherfuckers to give her our freedoms how about that how's that for political Rah, 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 give us our freedoms. Is that cool? <laughs> we'll see I what... Think soon enough we'll be I'm sorry, go ahead. Soon enough we'll be there, yeah. <laughs> I'll find out if that was approved politicalness that I was playing. <laughs> well, hey, uh, what else you got going on there? You said your strain review and you got a web series coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about the, or the yeah, grow series? I'm, I'm looking at doing a, uh, a pepper grow series. So I, I do hot... Peppers as well, uh, Carolina Reapers, uh -oh. ghost pepper, all kinds of stuff. Just starting those out right now. I like hot stuff. Mm -hmm. all... And uh, once once it's legal to grow here, I plan on doing a little bit of a cannabis grow series too. That's awesome. So yeah, cool. The web series, the grow series is going to be about peppers, dude. I'm totally into that. How'd you know? Hot shit. <laughs> I love hot shit. I've gotten as far as the uh, ghost pepper, I believe, the balut, or whatever it's called. Yeah, the, uh, I forget the exact technical name of it. It's like balut jalokia or some. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> that shit will fuck you up. Yeah, I've got a, a chocolate ghost pepper. Uh, Ooh. Just starting the seeds right now, actually. Awesome. I'll I've got a couple couple. Carolina Reapers just popped up, and uh, um, are they Jamaican red mushroom pepper? Which one's They're, hotter, uh, the uh, Reaper or the? Or the, the Reaper is the uh, world record holder. Tech. I think there's one or two things that it's the uh, world record. Yeah, I don't think I've tried that one yet. I've done the uh, Ghost Chili Pepper, and that's in everything nowadays, or they so they say. They uh, put it in the burgers. They say it's a uh, ghost chili sauce. I'm like, what? This ain't shit. I, I want the real <laughs> yeah, thing. Doesn't quite compare to the uh, real thing, no. Not a, f nah, not a smidge. <laughs> Actually, I gave a friend of mine one of those when he was drinking, and he said he hallucinated for 20 minutes. Oh, shit, I bet, dude. Hey, it will fucking... Yo, sound waves. <laughs> you like hot shit, and you like to trip? Eat one of those, bro. I bet you it will. You like, you'll probably see fractals all over the place. He was a, a little unsuspecting too. I told him it wasn't hot. And <laughs> Fuck. He Got him. You didn't see it. It was coming. No. Asan was... <laughs> Intrigue says he's got a hot sauce that will make you reconsider life. I'm down with that. What's up, Chief Master? You got to take off. Man, we appreciate you coming by. Thank you for your positive vibes. Return, sir. Amplified. Hope we uh, talk to you again soon. Thanks, sir. Hot sauce, no hot sauce for uh, fee rhymes with pee, fee dizzle. Why not? Is your stomach burnt up? <laughs> right on, right yeah, on. Yeah, I plan on, plan on producing a little hot sauce this summer too, so. Sweet. Are you going to bottle yeah. it up? Uh, I got a friend that's going to make it for me. He uh, owns a food truck. Awesome, dude. You got a name in bar ready, or are you gonna still working on them? <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't, haven't came up with a name yet, no. It's going to be, um, do you, I mean, I'm, I'm like, dude, I like hot sauce. I'm like, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more about hot sauce. <laughs> yeah, I, whatever grows here, I'll probably do a mixture of all the peppers I grow and see what happens. I'm going to leave the recipe to him, though. He's the expert on that. Oh, nice. Sounds good, man. Hey, Soundwave's dropped one of the chili sauces that I like, the hot sauce, that green stuff. That's what I call it. the chili habanero, El Yucateco, Yucateco, 
That shit's bomb. Bomb, bomb, bomb. I'm not playing Nickelback Road. I'm just kidding. Maybe I will. <laughs> if you come back every week, eventually I'll play Nickelback for you. What do you say? Maybe. Or not. <laughs> well, right on, man. Blunt smash shot. Hey, your pictures. How do you manage taking those badass pictures? Um, you get so close up to that you can see the trichomes even. How do you manage doing that? Yeah, I... It's all about the lighting. Um, I just use my phone, to be honest, and I got to make sure that the light is, the sun is, like, hitting it really nicely. But it's just the phone, and I zoom in. Actually, now, though, that um, my profile picture on on Discord here, I just I just made that one, and I got this magnifying glass that, that I uh, used for that one. So I'm going to be using those from now on. But that um, all the pictures on the Steemit are just my phone. Oh, Ron, the clown, Ron Dong, is saying you got to set it to macro mode and have plenty of light. It's easy. I don't have a phone, man. And even the phone pics I take are f boo-boo. I'm horrible. You know what? I I didn't even set it to macro. It's really maybe a dollar macro or something. But, yeah, I just, I just made sure that the sun was straight on it and intense. So that's what worked for me. You guys make sure you check out Blunt Smasher's... Uh strain reviews and that pickup there is a good one but he's got someone that gets really close man and like i even asked him like is that the trichomes how do you pick them how do you choose when you pick it when you were telling me a little bit about trichomes can you tell us you want to revisit a little bit of that conversation i asked you yeah, so uh, how do you know when trichomes or when do you pick based on trichomes yeah. so basically the trichome is the uh it's looks kind of like a mushroom it's uh the clear bulb um and on a stem there and it holds the cannabinoids so um, I think there's a hundred and eleven different cannabinoids but THC and uh, CBD are pretty much the two sought after ones. <laughs> so anyway so those those bulbs they uh, go from a clear to to a milky white color and then they go to amber those are kind of the three stages of the the uh, how it uh, Ooh, develops. There's a good picture. Um, so the the clear bulbs, they'll be um, that'd be early in harvest. If you get those, it's more going to be like an energetic high. Uh, the milky ones is is kind of prime harvest time there. That's going to get you the most effect from the uh, cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. And uh, once it starts to turn amber, it's degrading, and it's going to be more of a uh, a high you would want for going to bed it's going to make you a little bit more tired right so uh that's pretty much how those work i um and, am very amateur and i think i've tried that watching the trichomes uh, and uh i may have picked them too late but i always looked for that amber thing and then, then somebody told me no you want them clear and i guess it just depends on what kind of effect you want huh yeah for sure i mean uh most people will say go with the milky because that's kind of prime harvest but Word. It can all depend, right? Because um, sometimes your the weather doesn't turn out right. If it's getting cold in the season and have enough time to get those milky, then you're right. a harvester. It it can all depend on the plant, right? And some like you know the, there's the two main types of cannabis are the sativa and the indica, um, and then there's also one other called ruderols, which uh, isn't seen much it's it grows more in colder climates i believe and um doesn't amount to much it's a smaller plant but anyways the the sativa is more thought after as the uh more energetic daytime kind of cannabis and the indica is more of a a nighttime uh put you to bed kind of thing that can be influenced by the time you harvest it though with the uh, trichome colors right so mm -hmm. Also, I think sativa is more of the body high, whereas indica is more of the head high. They say so. Yeah, I tend to prefer the uh, the stuff that knocks you back a little bit, puts you. And I'm I, when I first started learning strains, it was indica puts you in the couch. So if you want to be knocked back for a little bit, smoke some heavy indica. But if you want to be up and peppy and maybe creative, you got a project and you want to get stoned, but you don't want to be low on the energy, then you smoke the sativa. <laughs> I yeah, I think find, that's. The, I'm sorry. That's just the general thought, I do believe. Right, and I'm. I like indica. It also helps with anxiety. Sativa tends to, if it's a real heavy sativa, then it'll get me 
the opposite effect. Like it'll actually increase my heart rate maybe and, and it help my anxiety actually blossom, which is weird, but it's true. It just depends on, you know, the effects. I like to try to get the calming heavy indica effects myself. Some people like sativas. Anyways. Man, I appreciate you sharing lot. some stuff there about that, that's for sure. I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut you off. No, yeah, there's there's a lot of different factors that can go into how the high how you feel from high, right? Because you got the indica sativa factor. You have the cannabinoids. Like you got CBD. You got THC. You got CBN. You got CBG. You got all these different cannabinoids, and they're all going to affect you differently. Mm-hmm. And then you got one more thing. You got the the terpene and the flavonoids, which is like the taste, right? Mm-hmm. So that also has an effect on uh, oh. some things like the lemon. I don't know how to pronounce these properly, but limonene. Limon. Yeah, limonene. Uh, you got different effects from that, right? You got antidepressant, anti-anxiety, things like that. Mm-hmm. All your different strains have taste and they these different ones in that way. So those can be a big uh, as well, they say. Absolutely, and I believe the, the turpins, and I've done a post about that myself and found that people like that one a lot. And they're like, hey, really? Because the taste profiles or even um, the effects related with it, say it's limey or something, it, it tends to have more of a sativa effect. It'll pep you up. Or if it's more like earthy, musky, then it might be an indica, which will lay you back. And those are all directly related to the turpins themselves. Each give a little bit of different flavor profile as well as effect. It's pretty cool when you start delving into the science of what you're smoking on. I love that shit. Yeah, exactly. I'd be trying to take, I've been trying, well, I haven't been trying. I've taken some courses online uh, trying to learn more as well as obtain hopefully a job in in the field like maybe as a butt tender or something like that. So I've done a, lo- a little bit more delving than the average person, and I really enjoy it. I suggest all you guys in the um, celebration of 420 learn something about weed because Blunt my Smash will be sharing some knowledge here. You still with us, Jack? Thank you for dropping pictures. Uh, the the dude Tuto didn't show up today, I guess, uh, so Jack's been dropping links for us. Thanks, brother. Do you have anything else you want us to um, take a look at tonight, bro, while you're with us? Um, there's a link. Boom, Diana Ross. What yeah, I, I posted that. I posted that uh, vape um, temperature boiling point in the pictures. Um, that that'll show you. Uh, like I've I've become more of a preferring the vape now, just because you can kind of dial in your here. Uh-huh. You get a lot more taste through the vaporizer, and. Uh, Depending on what temperature you can put it at, you can get certain compounds. If you don't necessarily want um, one thing or the other, you can set the vaporizer lower so you're not smoking. So you can really dial in what you're smoking there. But um, I don't have too much more to say on the on the matter tonight. I'd be uh, more than willing to come on another day. Well, cool, man. I appreciate what you did say with us. It's been a good conversation. I can't believe it's... I think we've been talking for half an hour. didn't realize it, man. I love weed. Everybody loves weed. I, I love your pictures, man. I'll be checking that shit out. Uh, the trichomes, I'm like, ooh. It makes me so fucking, like, weed hungry. You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, oh, it looks delicious. So I look forward to your weed strains, man. And hopefully we'll get you uh, a couple of more followers here, people. Because you know you like weed, too. Go check him out. Blunt Smasher. He's got a strain review. He's got an upcoming pepper series review. Which someday, come on, Canada, get on track so my man can grow it and make a series about that, too. Yeah. We appreciate you uh, spending your time with us, brother. Thank you very much. Happy 420, everybody. Thanks for having me on for 20. Absolutely. Pleasure. Pleasure's been ours, man. Anybody's got any questions for Blunt Smasher? Before we uh, play a song, I gotta go lubricate the voice tube again it's getting a little crunchy somebody's typing but uh, if you have any questions maybe throw them out there at blood smash thank you so much dude for coming by and yeah please stop by again in the future anytime if you just want to be a part of the honest you just want to stop in and drop us a 
uh, you know, a little tidbit, a little bit of information about weed. We always like that here. Thank you so much, dude, for coming by. Mad respect. Thanks, man. See you around. For sure, for sure, always. We'll be looking forward to more pictures and posts from our dude, Blunt Smasher. Thanks, Jack Dub, for sharing those. Dude, I'm sorry I'm sniffing so much, man. Didn't I explain that at the beginning? This is why I'm going to go to... <laughs> to a break and I could clear out my face a little bit. They're trying to kill me out here in Arizona with all these damn dust storms. That's all. I thought I covered that at the beginning. Road to nowhere. I'm sorry I don't sound awesome like Nickelback. <laughs> hey man, I got the sniffles. I got a throat thing. Everything's just all wacky. Let me try to play some damn steamy music for y'all right now while I go uh, clear that up for you. What do you guys say to that? What do we got lined up? What do we got lined up? Good stuff. Thank you, Blunt Smash. I always appreciate um, people who know stuff about weed. And, that, and didn't even know about the pepper thing. I must have missed that in a blog in his blog somewhere. Um, hey, uh, Wiz Squid, if you want to drop your blog during the next song, I think that's quite okay. Um, Wiz Squid's got some stuff that uh, she would like to share about art posting, I believe. So if you want to go ahead and drop a link, have a conversation. I'm going to go clear out my face, hopefully. And... <laughs> I'll sound a little bit better when I get back. I'm just scrolling now through our uh, suggestions over here. See what I can play. Sound waves. What do I got by sound waves? I got a James Gets It. I got a sound waves. Sound waves did a collab with uh, Breeze called Highwire. What about that one? It's on a SoundCloud. I think it'll be able to play. I can go blow my nose or something while it plays. This is uh, two people from the community. Also, she was on the guest last week. So, hey, bang. Man, we get to keep the circle going. Mad respect to sound waves and the song made here by Breeze. It's a SoundCloud sound link, sorry, called Highwire. Searching. 
was a collab between Breeze and Soundwaves called High Wire. I think I'm better now. Hey, I forgot to kind of give a leeway into the next segment. I'm sorry, guys. LL Farms, Prepper Vet Tech. We're going to jump over to uh, our dude Jack Dub. Is he's having sound issues. I don't know what it is. Maybe there's two people over in Pal. We're going to jump over to the other server for our voice chat. If you guys want to head over there, I'm going to jump over there. Um, and we're going to have a conversation with Jack Dub because it's homestead related. And he is doing it. And we're doing it. And we're going to talk about it. <laughs> well, I haven't done it yet. I want a homestead. But uh, that's why these guys, are, we're going to have a, all have a sit down around the table. Uh, drink some coffee. Smoke some chronic maybe. And have a conversation about some things. So if you guys want to head over there to the voice server for that, then we'll jump on that. And I think in between, I'll just play another song by our dude James Gets It. And then we'll jump into our conversation to finish out the rest of our show here. I can't believe already it's almost quarter past the second into the second hour. Awesome stuff, man. I've had some good conversation with y'all. I was kind of worried about my voice. I know it's not great to begin with, so thanks for sticking it out. And uh, like I said, I'm going to play a song by James Gitzit. This is off of his new one, Scribes 2. I believe it came out this week. And then in the meantime, I'm going to meet up over in the voice server on the RDP. So we can have a conversation with Jack Dub, LL Farms, and Prepper Vet Tech. Check this one out. It's going to play. I feel so. Feel so. I know how to live this life or how to get shit right once I flip this light all I know is when I grip this mic I got this love for it that is the reason I can spit this tight I'm not the smartest but what I've harnessed is pure passion when I write it on parchment it gives me the courage of many you're lying and lie that's my heart whenever I start to feel heartless but music now it is Marxist art that is artless masses must consume taking food from the garbage shit man I'd rather be starving so come march with me as I start my bombardment on the scene and on the market bless this in your car in your house or apartment yeah I'm just giving you what's real that's why I call the scribes describing what I feel My name is what it means. I get it ready, give it, just explaining the routine. For probably one of the oldest ancient things. It's called the spirit and it's clear it's where I've been. Sometimes I feel like all of it's a dream. Cause life and death, I'm living in between. I see my feelings, but my body's a machine. Like I'm the director, I live behind the scenes. But I want to reach higher than that. I want to let myself feel mad more than a minor relapse. I want to flow when I am sad, tired of quiet I have. I want to give it all I have until I cry and collapse. And I hope I find me at last. I hope my life it'll last. Or did I die in the past? But I'm sure that one day I will finally laugh. Because I can feel that I will heal. Just need time to heal that. James gets a feel so yo that was dope scribes to uh album jumping over into the chronic and coffee voice chat and I'm all by myself. I'm sorry I didn't give you guys much of a leeway there, but if um Jack Dub and if Prepper Tech are ready, we can there's prep prep tech in the build or prepper vet, sorry, in the building. Jack Dub in the building. If you guys are ready. What's up, Jack Dub? How you doing, man? You hear me, bro? Yes, I do. What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, good. Yeah, it's going real good. Are you live? Yeah, we are live. Sorry about that, dude. I kind of did a bad segue. I didn't let you guys much time to come over, but we are live, man. How's it going? How's it going? Everybody, so oh, what's up, Jack Dub? Going great. 
Yeah, I think the uh, LL farm, L and L farms will be uh, over on Al with the interview. So we'll. Uh, oh, okay. Interview uh, Prepper Vet UK for now. Cool. Well, hey, if the people don't know about Jack, Jack Dub's part of the team here, he's helping us out. Bill, he was out here getting all these people together for me, man. Thank you so much, uh, getting everybody lined up. And tonight, you got somebody of a specialty. Why don't you go ahead and introduce? Yep, this is a Prepper Vet UK. I'm from a from the Prepper group. Yeah, I've known him for quite a while. Um, you on uh, Prepper Vet? Yeah, someone here. Glad to have me Excellent. on. Yeah, glad you can make it. What's uh, up, man? Thank you for I'm coming. Yeah, we'll go ahead and, uh, I guess, let you uh, say a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, your interests and uh, kind of what got you in the, the prepping side. Yeah, no worries. I was uh, an ex-Army veteran. Uh, I was in the Army for 25 years. Uh, during my time, uh, most of it was in the airborne role. I was uh, did various jobs and specializations from forward air controller to helicopter specializations. Uh, communications intercept and probably communications is my biggest speciality in the army world and I finished as a warrant officer at the top of my tree the various tours of duty uh, Central America Bosnia Kosovo uh, out to Sierra Leone and then into the Middle East did a short spell in Iraq and a long spell <laughs> in Afghanistan and left there about eight years ago now and I'm now into uh, into a prepping regime based on what I saw and my experiences throughout my previous 25 years so I'm a full-time prepper now a uh, survivalist and I research survival full-time I don't work that is my my full-time job uh, so to speak I run a channel I run a uh, small YouTube channel and I've got a presence on Steam it. That's all good stuff. I like what you said there about being. Could you um? You said you were uh, in the army and you were in communications, and what you learned there has led you to where you're at now. Is that what you said, basically? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That combined with uh, my experiences, uh, I don't. I don't want to be in the situation that I've seen people in. Uh, whilst visiting these various places around the world, you know what I mean? Right. How do you go about, um, like, you take uh, your name prepping for something like that, how do you go about preparing yourself to, and maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that, what exactly do you, how do you prepare, what is your version of, of prepping, and maybe what are you prepping for? Well, I'm not a, uh, a long-time prepper. I'm not uh, an apocalyptic Armageddon type scenario prepper because if that's going to happen it's going to wipe out most people then so be it my, my target sort of time frame to prepare for is for long duration disasters up to about three months in duration so the way I go about that and I, the way I think everyone should go about it is to start off with some sort of threat analysis where yeah, everyone's in a different situation find out what threats are immediately imposing onto your location and your life and have some contingencies surrounding those threats and I think everyone's got to have the, at least the basic supplies shelter some water supplies food supplies protection supplies and then slowly build on those all good things all good things and that's got to be relative to where you're at i would imagine so say what's your um your are, i take it, your name says uk are you in the uk right now or yeah that's right i, I tried to uh <laughs> it took me a while to think of a name so uh, i thought i'd keep it simple and a good indication to people as to what i am where i am so i'm a prepper hmm I'm a veteran, and yes, I'm based at the moment <laughs> in UK. Yeah. What kind of situations you face? I'm sorry if I'm if Jack. Shut me up if you have any questions. But what kind of situations do you face um, that people may only face in the United Kingdom? Say if you're prepping for something like that. I know it's an island. That's about all I know about it. But can you tell us a little about the difficulties you may face in that type of surrounding, so to speak? 
Yeah, so UK is quite a unique place uh, in the world as opposed in, in relation to various threats. I mean, we've got a minimal earthquake threat. We've got a minimal tsunami threat. I'm not discounting these as being uh, a, a, a non-event. You know, I'm not saying they're not going to happen, but the, the absolute chance of these happening are right down on the bottom end of the scale. I think that the, um, I mean, it's been described as one of the safest places in the world to live because of this sort of climate and scenario. The biggest threat we face every year in terms of the climatic threat would be storms, I'd say. Then you got the, um, you can progress from there onto the electrical side, the power grid failure, which is a worldwide threat anyway. Right. But in UK, I would say that the most common threat would be the slow disintegration and uh, of society really you know the society is slowly getting disfragmented so crime rates going up uh, all, all you know every location within within the UK um, there's no one thing you pin, pin it on. You, can, you just got to be aware of your surroundings mm -hmm. and aware of the situations and then adapts and changes as time goes on. Absolutely. I mean, if you can't really be prepared for something specific, specific, I hope I said that right. Be prepared mentally for anything to happen, right? Be aware of your surroundings. Don't just be like, la, 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 la. Go about your daily life. I mean, you can. There's nothing wrong with that either. But prepping, I feel, feel like it's the best way to ensure, I mean, you can't ensure everything, but what the hell, be prepared, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, the main thing is the, uh, whatever event is going to happen, uh, the first step is to survive that event. Once that event's been and gone, then you're into sort of a next stage and you're in a rebuilding phase. So there'll be an initial phase of uh, survivability pick up the casualties, address the situation, first aid, short-term uh, supplies, getting dug into water, food, wait for any sort of rehabilitation phase and construction phase, and then you're into a longer-term type of uh, rebuild in order to sustain your own life, your own family life, uh, and not fall by the wayside and left with nothing because you haven't been bothered to prepare beforehand. Right. I mean, I'm not saying it's... Uh, I mean, everyone's got this vision that, that preppers are full-time. That's all they think about. I mean, everyone's got other lives. Mm. Uh, it's, just, just have some simple contingencies in place to when things turn sour, you know. Right. And you, you said something about the... Let's be real about what could affect the whole global, one way or the other, if the if power is affected somehow, say there's a solar flare or some kind of interruption where there's power down for a week, and we've seen this happen where storms affect little islands and stuff, Puerto, Puerto Rico, whatever, um, Costa Rica, or small things like that, even yeah. in Texas, and, and I'm sure you guys experience it as an island yourselves in the uk but can you imagine like the whole united states going on people would lose their shit just because they're not prepared for that something like that to happen they're just gonna freak out just like be mentally prepared right like for the possibility at least come yeah, on yeah absolutely and these things follow a pattern it's happened before and i think it was a good example especially for people in america would be the 1972 there was a blackout in new york i believe and within two hours the crime rate soared and just kept escalating and escalating and i mean that was after two hours and right. at the four hour stage the police couldn't cope with the the activities that were going on i mean after I don't, i'm not sure how long it lasted i think it was 48 hours in total someone will probably correct me on that but after 48 hours things were were really turning bad you know mm -hmm. I wasn't around then, but I'm sure I could probably look into that, and I, I could imagine how people back then were reacting without information. And do you think people would probably react the same way now when in information is more available, or say that if the power is down and there wasn't information available and they'd freak out? Do you think it would be this, like the same thing nowadays, probably or possibly? 
Yeah, absolutely. You can't change human nature. <laughs> People get desperate. It is desperate of things. I mean, uh, a, a problem with UK, for instance, and I'm sure with most developed countries, especially smaller ones, is that uh, let's take UK an example. It, it's a very efficient country. It's got a uh, very efficient uh, transport infrastructure and regime. So every year, this this, um, this system so fragile that it just takes one major road accident, one major event on the train lines, and everything comes to a standstill. Uh, when it comes to a, a, a power outage or communications outage, then this is the same sort of thing that happened. It was only like last month we had the beast from the east, which is a big snowstorm that came in from Russia, <laughs> of all places. And uh, did they name it that? Be yeah, yeah, that was it. The, the beast from the east. Of course. And you've got the pest. <laughs> We've got other nicknames. You know, the pest from the west, which is big snowstorm uh, storms and winds coming from the west across the Atlantic. But this one from the east, uh, which was a snowstorm, uh, plunged Britain into minus five, minus ten temperatures whole country come to a standstill roads were blocked trains were blocked the supermarket shelves uh superstores were they, they were stripped of food and water within two days i mean this was mainly due to a uh you know the efficient communication system we got through the the tv and so on everyone had warning right uh whether you chose to it, adhere to that warning was was your choice but within yeah within two days all the shelves were stripped bare and it was a good job it was a short duration event otherwise Jeez. it would have just gone sa the sour rapidly you know that's crazy i mean I'm, it happens without even that i mean i'm sure there's more stories about like when storms come through and people yeah people know about it and they're told to leave or you know and they're They'll stick around to loot, maybe. <laughs> That's crazy to me. Like, they don't care about their lives or anything. Or maybe they care about saving their pictures or something. Come on, people. Save yourselves, man. I appreciate having the conversation. What can you tell us, like, um, like an amateur person who's really not prepared? What's some real basic stuff to have around or be prepared for in case of, like, an emergency or something like this may happen? So you're not caught out in the cold and you're looking at, well, where's the shelves are bare? What should we have at all times? Right. I think anyone has got to take a couple of hours out at least, preferably say a day, just sit there, think about uh, your location situation and what is immediately likely to impact you at that location. Some sort of threat analysis, and it doesn't have to be any, anything complicated, just have a mental thought process uh, of where's my nearest store, where's my nearest alternative water source for instance this could be a pond this could be a uh, another faucet somewhere maybe in a, a garage and then once you've decided what your immediate threat is you can start to build up a picture of what you need like i said the the major thing is the surviving the the initial event so Word. you need a first aid kit some sort of forced first aid kit no matter how simple it is Breathing, bleeding, breaks, burns. Think about how you would control and uh, counter those. Have a store of water, bottled water, or preferably have a, uh, a source of water collection and some sort of filtration or purification system. Then you need a, a source of food. Tin food is preferable. Freeze dried food is even better, although it's expensive. And if you're going to store food, store the food that you eat on an everyday basis so that right. when it comes down to the <laughs> comes down to the why you're not eating something you one don't like or two you may be allergic to uh, so after you've got those things in place ensure you have some form of heating when the heating goes off the electricity goes off it's going to get cold very quickly and a major threat will be some sort of hypothermia or hyperthermia when you overheat so a cooling system if you're in hotter climates as well and above and beyond after all those are in place 
then have some form of protection in case you do have to counter attackers, looters, or anyone wants who wants to try and get your supplies. Uh, and then just keep your eyes and ears open and just go about your daily lives and monitor the situation. Look out for the threats that are building up so that you can have your little plan in place. I mean, in the prepping, in the prepping world, everyone talks about, you know, are oh, we are going to bug out into the woods? We're going to live off the land and all this sort of rubbish. But for most people, that's a fantasy and that won't happen. You go to the woods, if you're fit enough to get there for a start, then you'll probably die after three days when you run out of food anyway. So, I mean, when he was talking about bugging out, yeah. bugging out uh, is a term that everyone should stay placed in their location unless it is no longer habitable or safe to do so. Then you go to an alternate location, which in my view is what I call bugging out. That's very smart, so, and I try to keep that. I mean, like, yeah, everybody may want it bugging out. They just run away from where you're at. Well, where you, what are you running from? Where are you going to go? Be prepared for that. I don't mean to cut you short, dude, but I got another uh, set of people to talk to, dude. And it's all great information. Jack Dub, I appreciate you dropping links for our f new friend here, uh, Prepper Vet Tech. Or you, I keep wanting to call you Vet Tech. Why, dude? You're not a Vet Tech. <laughs> vet from UK. I'm not a veterinarian either. Yeah. <laughs> he's, not a, he's a veteran, dang it. I'm sorry about that. No disrespect, man. And I'm going to hop on with LL Farms, and then we're going to talk about some more homestead and stuff. So I apologize for try for cutting you short because like, we could go on for the rest of the hour. You know what I mean? Yeah, no worries. But thank you so much and, uh, for sharing your knowledge. And, of course, everybody check out his page. He's got some more. I'm going to check it out because I want to be prepared um, for possibilities. So thank you again, sir, for sharing that with us. Jack, do you have any questions for the guy before uh, I'm going to jump to the song, and then we'll jump on with LL? Jack is typing. Are you not in the? And I'm, I need. To, I'm sniffing again. Yeah, I'm back here. There you go. Do you have any questions for yeah, the dude before I move? Oh uh, no, yeah, I appreciate you coming on, Prepper, and uh, we'll be talking in the morning. We usually, uh, we can touch on the group. Yeah, no problems. Thank you so much, and I, I appreciate Jack for reaching out to you, and I appreciate you for coming. And uh, we're going to play our way into a song so I can go clear up my face again. Thanks again, sir, for stopping by. Everybody check his stuff out. Much respect, sir. Have a great night. Have a great day, whatever it may be. Thank you again. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. And uh, what song? I had a song in my, in my mind. You guys be prepared. You never know what's going to happen, right? Even if it's having water on hand or just being aware of your surroundings. That's a little bit that I know, and I'm trying to learn more. I got books about plants. I got books about the desert because that's my surrounding. Just be aware of where you're at. Make some common sense moves. Maybe you could survive and help us rebuild because we don't know if it's what's going to happen, but we should be ready for whatever. I want to play a song, then we'll come back, and we're going to fit in LL Farms and have a discussion, and then that's probably the end of the show. Can you believe it? It's almost over. But as you can tell, I need to clear out my face again, so I'm going to play a song. I'm going to come back over to the other server. We're going to talk with LL Farms. Thanks again, Prepper. Mad respect. Thanks, Jack Dove, for hooking that up. And we'll see you guys over there in just a minute. And let me pick one. This is a favorite of mine. Hope you guys dig it. It's the DOC. All right. That was the DOC, Return of the Liver Dead. It kind of fit in. Didn't think about it, but his voice is all messed up. My voice is all messed up. I'm about to pull in LL Farms. And I thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you, Prepper. Vet. Veteran. <laughs> UK man, thank you, Jack Dub. Jack Dub. See, I'm man, I'm messing up. I apologize. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. And I just pulled you guys into live. What's up, LL Farms? And is Normic with you, or are you guys the ten? He is. Yes, he's. Are you? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Hello. Thank you for coming. Hey, thanks for having us. Yes, Normok is Mr. LL Farms, as he refers to himself, and uh, <laughs> not on the same mic, <laughs> so he's separate in there. Oh, right on. Well, thank you guys for coming to Chronic and Coffee, LL Farms, and you guys are a husband-wife team, and I jacked up, set it up that way. I didn't know who was actually going to show up, but thank you for coming. Please give us a breakdown. I'm sure everybody here probably knows you, but please let us know who you are, what you do, what you're about, if you don't mind. Yeah, I think Normok might be figuring out his mic. 
uh, we'll wait on that. But sure. we are a um, homestead um, on the on the way to off grid living um, in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Our goal is just to make it instead of buy it and to become self sufficient in any way that we can and self sustainable. Um, so we have chickens that we're actually currently hatching quite a few more. A big garden, trying to make things everything ourselves. Um, we're currently doing a big project with pallet wood and doing complete beehives out of the pallet wood that we are planing down into lumber. And I say we, I mean him, are planing down into lumber, and uh, that's been our our big project lately. It looks like we lost Normak there. It's bees, man. Hey, bees are very important. We're all. I'm sorry, I was not losing here. People are asking me to turn you up, so I'm trying to turn you up a little bit. Oh, he said much better. Get ready for a loud one, cause I bumped it up even louder. I guess we lost Normak. I apologize about that. So yeah, bees. That's awesome. What do you do? What do you guys yeah, plan on doing yeah. with the bees? Are you guys obviously creating honey and doing what with that? Eating it right. or? <laughs> Right. Well, we go through a lot of honey, and so we, we don't have to buy honey anymore, um, but we actually are, are planning on selling it, which will be a, a nice income into the into the homestead, and then I make a lot of our own products, so the beeswax would go towards that and possibly selling that as well. So just it's all about kind of um, living off the land, making money off the land instead of working for somebody else. That's awesome. And now we got Normak on here. What's up, man? You hear us all right? How are you? How are you? We're good. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. As you probably, I don't know if you heard or not, but your uh, your wife was telling us about your bee projects and um, making money off the land, and uh, we want to know more. What else can you tell us about LL Farms, uh, your guys' projects here on PAL, as well as maybe some homesteading jazz? I love, I want to hear it all. What do you got? <laughs> I'm sorry we only so, got like 20 uh, minutes left, but feel free to hit us with as much as you can. No, so the whole point of the bees, uh, the the beehives was I just wanted to kind of give everybody, you know, there's a lot of people, young guys especially, who don't have a chance to make good money, and this would be a, a good way that they could get into something that would produce income every year. And, you know, I mean, if you, even if you don't have land, you could you could build a beehive, and a farm would love you to put it on his property. And then you could just go harvest your honey, and you can sell that. And, I mean, uh, each hive will make you about uh, – Right, right around 100 plus or minus pounds, and that's um, 70. That's that's about uh, $800 worth of honey per year you'd get for per each hive. And so, I mean, you know, for a young guy who's trying to do something, he's got to get a table saw and he can go right to work and make a beehive. At, for basically nothing, all you got to do is buy the bees, or or you can catch a swarm if you if you're that uh, industrious. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's huh. that was kind of the goal there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If I cut you off. Yeah. No. So the the real the whole point of it was you know back uh, I for for my own point um, uh, back in 2003, kind of shortly after 9/11, I I kind of just started seeing the world a lot differently, and I I thought to myself we need to do something totally different. So I kind of had a singular vision in mind, a goal to just get get some land of our own and and start you know just getting as far away and re removing ourselves from uh, having to work with the current structure of society, you know, just kind of withdraw my consent from a lot of different avenues, grocery stores that sell bad food, um, uh, just you name it. I was just trying to find a way to kind of pull myself away from the, that paradigm. And right. this has been kind of one aspect of it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty deep. And how, how you guys say you're in South Dakota and <clears throat> – you're working on becoming off the grid, or are you guys already there already, or what fate well, are you just, facing? Yeah, so we've got uh, we've got our own water, we've got our own sewage system, you know, it's a septic system. Um, I've got a 11 kilowatt generator with you know huge propane backup, and I just purchased a, a Honeywell windmill that's a five kilowatt windmill, and then um, some solar panels are going to go up this year, and then. Uh, a lithium phosphate iron battery system that's going to back that all up and um yeah so power independence will be probably by the end of the year end of summer anyway um it's awesome so yeah we've got water we've got electricity and we, we're making some food um 
We're pretty close. We're pretty close. I know me and my wife would talk about being off of the, uh, the electric grid in a way where we don't have to pay the damn APS bill no more. These freakers. We're using even less energy so far this year, and it shows us on a, our, on our bill, right, how much you use each year and what you used last year. <laughs> and we're using less energy, but it's costing so much more. It's ridiculous, man. Like almost out of necessity, yeah. we're going to have to move out of this structure that we're, we're in with paying these people astronomical prices. They just raise for no reason. What the hell? Yeah, I, you're out in Arizona. I've heard actually stories. I read a couple stories where the people who put up solar panels in Arizona, they're actually still charging them a tax to be off the grid, which I think is <laughs> lunacy. But that's the way it goes, I guess. Yeah, they like to do stuff where – I don't know about that because we haven't had that yet. They've suggested it to us. We've talked to the, sol the company, and they're like, why don't you guys think about getting some solar, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you f idiots, we live in an apartment. That's not really an option. I mean, I know we could get a little thing thing, but – Come on, you know what I mean. You guys are char the the point is you guys are charging us so much money for the necessity to cool our apartment in 120 degree weather. Like, geez, that's my rant and rave on yeah, APS. Urgh, shake the fist, and I'm sorry for taking your time up on that one. But it kind of interests me in figuring out how to get off of that structure, like you were talking about. I want to get away from that. I would like to learn. How yeah, the to first do that. thing the. Sorry, the first thing we did was buy some property. I mean, that was you know, and we didn't get to. Uh, a very expensive property it was pretty pretty inexpensive and we just kind of developed it from there um that was really what we did right on how hard is it to get property these days is there quite a bit available in south dakota is or the out here i know it's there's some but it's the desert and a lot of it's owned by the state or the feds yeah <laughs> um property's pretty cheap i mean you can get some properties out here for you know if you don't want choice choice of forest land then you can for under a few thousand an acre if you're going to get like a 10 acre lot you should be able to get that for like 20,000 I mean, it seems it's not that much money really when you kind of break it all down what you can do with that property you can put yourself some animals on it you can run some honey um you could grow off of it um and and that might you know just pay it back and then i think a big thing to do if, if you are you know, considering getting into buying your own land is pay attention to zoning when you, when you purchase it. That's a big thing. A lot of people kind of mess up on that. Make sure you can do what you want to do on that property before you buy it. Can you tell us a little bit about zoning and what that, what type of situations people might run into as far as that goes? Yeah. So, so out here there's, there's parkland zoning, there's, um, forest residential, there's, um, just straight residential and it, it depends. Like, for example, we're on forest, park forest re residential, which means we can do just about anything we want on this property, um, including small business. Um, we, we do have some zoning requirements as far as um, building codes and all that we have to adhere to, um, which is I don't find that to be a problem. But, um, hmm. yeah, I purchased some property in North Dakota a few years back, and we were going to kind of do the same thing. And that turned into a big nightmare with the county. I was battling them for half a year, and uh, I lost miserably. And so we just moved out to uh, South Dakota and did that. Man. Damn you, zoning, zoning boards or whoever. <laughs> well, I was going to say something, too, because I think a lot of times one thing that I hear is that people don't know where to start, right? That it seems like such a big investment. You have to buy property. You have to do this. You have to do that. It just starts with one thing. Start with making something instead of buying it, whatever that is. You know, start that process. Um, and for us, it's not that we were rolling in dough and just decided to come out and buy a big, big piece of property. We we sacrificed for years to be able to do what we wanted to do. So, it just starts with one thing. Anybody can do it, really. I, I saw the half acre comment in the chat, and I agree with that. Yeah, you just need a half acre. Start planting your own vegetables. Mm. Make your own deodorant instead of buy it. Um, just deodorant. small that? steps. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who needs deodorant? Whatever, man. Let it be free. Free your, free your stench. I'm just joking. There you go. Just embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really good recipe on my blog, though, if you need one. Yeah, I'm interested. Who, who wouldn't be? I mean, that's cool. How do you make your own deodorant? I'm especially like all natural, right? Yeah, just just simple ingredients. Combine them um, with some different herbs and essential oils. And um, I've been making ours for a few years now. So that, it, that's how it started with us was 
with everything else, just kind of me taking on some things and making them instead of buying them, which is sort of my our philosophy and kind of what we try to help people with through the blog is to show people how to make stuff, show you how to do it through um, our trial and error <laughs> so that right. you don't have to deal with the trial and error. Um, but yeah, just one step. That's dope. I like the idea because you could start small or as big as you are capable of doing, right? Like you could change everything, stop using everything or go small, change the way you eat, change the way your hygiene or something is like that. That's dope. I like yeah, it. exactly. I mean, just see you, if you're in an apartment, you can start a small hydroponics system on your balcony, you know, or in your, <laughs> inside. Right. Uh, you can throw some stuff on the on the patio to grow. You can start making bread instead of buying. I mean, there's little things. Clearly, you can only do so much in, in your circumstances. But, mm. um, yeah, it, it's just one thing at a time. Don't get overwhelmed. Right on. Rachel makes the best bread, too. You hear that? We're, we're going to start making more bread. We usually have dough on or flour or whatever things to make bread on hand. She's good at oh, it and it's delicious. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's so much better than the store bought. Heck yeah. A dollar twenty a loaf or something. <laughs> right. At right. least one of those a day we go through. Kids like their peanut butter jellies, that's for sure. Yeah, a loaf of bread doesn't last long around here either. <laughs> well I'm definitely interested in learning how to um, you know, change some things in my life that may be easier than making that big change and getting the land and I think that's that would be great if we could, uh, but in small steps, maybe that'll help if we stop playing into the system. I would like to get there where I'm not paying APS, Angry Fist, any more electric bills yeah, that are crazy for no reason. That. So, appreciate you sharing us some knowledge with that about that. Oh, of course, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, we 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 started just like everybody else but the land was really the, the turning point for us getting on land and being able to do what we wanted to do was a big step but yeah we uh, sacrificed sacrificed to get there so right it takes work it's kind of crazy how these days that we have to work hard to get back to nature and to the way things were in a simpler time maybe 100 years ago they don't want right. us to do it anymore. They like they want to zone us out of it. They don't. They tell us we can't homeschool our kids. They have to be here. You have to be here. It's crazy. It's so hard to do. It seems like. Yeah. Well, I don't want to cut you short, but we're getting close to the end of the show. I thank you guys for listening. This is Chronicle and Coffee. We're live on MSP Waves Radio. Man, it's been a good show. We're having great conversations with here with LL Farms and husband Normak. Am I saying that right, sir? Yeah, this is perfect. Right on. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to drop down with us? Any more links or what's going on in the near future that we could be attuned to or check out? Um, I think just uh, thanks for having us. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to do some fabrication projects coming up, steel fabrication, and and then uh, showing the, the solar system install this year. So that will be exciting. Sweet. Solar system installation. I look forward to that one. I want to learn about that one because I think – can get off grid man and, and definitely break that tie with that uh, psh, top of my list <laughs> thank you sir for coming by thank you man for coming by i know it's late wherever you guys i don't know what time south dakota you guys like an hour ahead maybe either way i'm sure it's it's late so thank you so much for you guys' time i'm mad respect i'm starting to get stuffy again dang it yeah thanks for having us we appreciate it thank you so thank much, you guys. thank you jack dub, jack dub i can't even say dub for dropping links you guys feel free to uh, come by anytime drop any links on your way out you guys this has been ll farms and normak i need to get a drink of water please excuse me okay a little bit better so thank you guys for joining us uh, we got about six minutes left of the show um road to nowhere we're gonna be best pals aren't we sniff sniff that you're right dude next week no sniffles i hope Jeez, it feels like I've been sick for months and months. And uh, thank you, Rachel, for getting me medicine, which I'm about to go take as soon as I get out of here and lay my head down and hopefully heal. Positive vibrations. Thank you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. LL Farms. I'm sorry I felt like we crammed a, a, quite a bit in there. I hope to hear more from you guys. and Feel free to stop by in the future to share more with us as you develop more. Thank you, Jack Dub, for getting all these great guests on here tonight, man. I feel like we did a whole lot of conversating, a lot less music playing, which is cool. We learned a lot. I'm going to have a lengthy post to write about it tomorrow. <laughs> I probably won't be able to talk very well either. And you know what? Uh, hey, um, Road to Nowhere. 
Oh, it's so gross, man. I'm sorry. It really is. I feel bad for that one. I apologize, guy. That was that was gross. But uh, there's your Nickelback for you. And I'm sorry for sounding like shit. Hopefully next time is better. You guys, it's been a good show, right? More Nickelback. No, you can go play Nickelback when I when I get when I'm out of here. Hey, jacked up. Thank you so much, dude. Like I said, he pretty much booked all the guests for tonight's show, and I did the best I could. I hope everybody had a good time, learned a lot. It was pretty homesteady, preppy. Uh, we had some music at the beginning with Chief Mapster, thank you, sir, and Steam It Music Alliance. We talked some Chronic. It's now about to be 420 in my neck of the woods in about another hour, so we talked some Chronic-based stuff with uh, Blunt Smasher. Thank you. Then we talked to Prepper Vet UK, veteran. Damn it, do I keep I keep messing it up? I'm sorry. Mad respect, Prepper. Tanish, what up, man? Thanks for coming. Um, you just missed me sounding like poop again, so no big deal. I'm just playing I'll have the post up tomorrow if you really want to check it out. We'll post that up at um, Chronic and Coffee uh, show posts after I edit out some of the music that we can't play. We had some good steamer music by Soundwaves and uh, Breeze did a collab. Then we had James Gets it, of course, and uh, some other mainstream stuff. Jack Dub was helping me out. Great show, Jack. I appreciate you, man. A lot of content tonight, dude. Good stuff, good stuff. I welcome anybody to come at us in the future with any other topics it doesn't have to be homestead uh, that's just what we were kind of vibing on tonight i hope you guys enjoyed the show look forward to talking to you next week i'm gonna play a song out because i sound like poo and uh thank you guys for coming thank you msp waves radio for having us mad respect remember all these thoughts and things that we shared tonight it's not their fault but they did give me that the opportunity to share it with you guys so <laughs> thanks guys thanks msp thanks meno meno rondong everybody over there aggroed and um Stay tuned for more. All right, I'm going to play my way out. Thanks, guys. You guys have a great night. This is Insane Clown Posse, Posse Mad Professor. Respect, y'all.